Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to today's biology lesson. My name is Stephen Kariongi. So today we continue with what we were learning during our last lesson, uh, which was on transport in plants. And uh, specifically, we were looking at the differences between a dicotyledonous root and a monocotyledonous root. So we'll summarize that in form of a table. So I'll summarize this as monocot root, dicot root, on the other hand. In our last lesson, uh, we had two diagrams showing the transverse section through a dicotyledonous root and a monocotyledonous root. And we can be able to pick the differences from those diagrams. And in the case of a monocotyledonous root, we saw that vascular bundles, that is the xylem and the phloem, are arranged in a ring around the center. Whereas, in the dicot root, we saw a star-shaped xylem and the phloem alternates at the arms of the star. So that is the most fundamental uh, difference between a monocot root and a dicot root. So we are saying that in a monocot root, the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring around the center, whereas in a dicotyledonous uh, root, uh, the xylem is star-shaped while the phloem alternates at the arms of the star. Now, to proceed on this, uh, I would also wish to discuss the longitudinal section through a, dic or, okay, through a root, whether a dicotyledonous or a monocotyledonous. And I explained the last time that a longitudinal section is when you cut a vertical section, whereas a transverse section is when you cut a cross section. Now, so when you cut a longitudinal section, uh, you'll have something like this. the root hairs then we have on the outside we have the phloem and then inside we have the xylem at the tip at the very tip of the root we have the root cup. And then we can divide this into a number of zones. So the first zone 
is at the tip. Then we have another zone here. Let's just change a little bit. So the first zone, which is at the tip, we refer to that as the zone of cell division. That is where the cells are actively dividing, and that is what brings about the lengthening of the root. The root becomes longer. The cells around here are dividing. And basically, the type of cells that we have inside there, we refer to them as meristems. That's why we have the meristems. Then we have the next zone. And this one we refer to it as the zone of cell elongation. And it is in this zone where it's this zone where the cells attain the maximum size. The cells attain the maximum size. Then we have the next zone. And this is now the zone of cell differentiation. Different zone of cell differentiation now to explain the those uh, that region the cells become differentiated at this region whereby they become differentiated into various tissues so that's why we have the phloem and the xylem it's also in this zone we have the root hairs so some cells go to form the root hairs others form the xylem Others form the phloem, and that's what we are calling differentiation. They become modified to perform different functions. The zone of cell elongation, the cells elongate. The cells attain their maximum size. And then we have the zone of cell division, where we have the meristems, and this is whereby the cells divide and increase in number. So basically, that's what we have as a longitudinal section section through the root the next thing that we are going to look at are the internal tissues all that we have seen the xylem the phloem the root cup and the root hairs what are their functions? We look at the functions of those uh, tissues. So in this case, we'll talk about tissues in roots and their functions. And uh, we'll talk of the root cup. It's at the tip of the root, and that one is for protection. Against mechanical damage. So this is usually a tough layer that prevents the cells that are underneath from getting damaged mechanically as the root is going into the soil. Uh, then 
Uh, another tissue or another group of cells worth mentioning are the root hairs. And these ones are numerous to increase the surface area of absorption of water and mineral salts. So, also, the root hairs are also elongated. They are also elongated. They are long. To reach water and mineral salts. And you can have a, a diagram showing a root hair cell, how it looks like. So this is a, a root hair cell. As you can see, it's elongated. Uh, it has a cell wall, has a cell membrane, just like a normal plant cell. The cytoplasm, the vacuole, and then we have the nucleus here. So that is basically uh, the structure of uh, a root hair cell. Now, the next thing that we look at, what are the adaptations of a root hair cell? Adaptations of a root hair cell. One, we have stated here that it is elongated to provide a large surface area. for absorption of water and mineral salts. So it is elongated. You can see it's long, it's elongated. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it is thin-walled. to reduce the distance across which water and mineral salts pass. Uh, also, uh, it has a large vacuole for storage of water and mineral salts. So basically, those are the three adaptations of a root hair cell. 
So a root hair cell should have those three characteristics. It should be elongated, long, to provide a large surface area for the absorption of water and mineral salts. Should be thin-walled so that the distance across which mineral salts that are entering pass, it's small. And then the vacuum should be large to facilitate the, the storage. So we are going to stop there and then have a short assignment on the same. So that is the assignment. There's a diagram here. And the question is, use the diagram above to answer the following questions. Label the parts X, Y, and Z. And then part B of the question, state the functions of zone A and B. There is zone B and there is zone A. So we're going to stop there. See you next time. <laughs>